The Weird Circle. In this cave by the restless sea, we are met to call from out the past stories strange and weird. Bellkeeper, toll the bell so all may know we are gathered again in the Weird Circle. Tonight, the Ogden's Playhouse brings you another Weird Circle story by one of your favorite writers, Edgar Allan Poe. The Cask of Amontillado is the story of a man's desire for revenge. The story of man's desire for smoking satisfaction when rolling his own cigarettes invariably leads the smoker to Ogden's Fine Cut, the tobacco that's famous for its uniform high quality. Try Ogden's. It's a top-notch cigarette tobacco on all counts. You'll find Ogden's easy to roll, delightful to smoke. Yes, easy to roll, delightful to smoke. And now, The Cask of Amontillado by Edgar Allan Poe. Out of the past, phantoms of a world gone by speak again the immortal tale, The Cask of Amontillado. Bells, just as bells. For 40 years I've lived with the sound of those bells. Fool's bells, just as bells. They call me rich old Angelo Montresor. Envy me my palazzo and my well-stocked wine cellars. My vast estates and honored reputation. Little do they know that all I possess is dust and ashes for I am a man who longs for death. But years ago, in this same lovely Italian town, I was the young Angelo, filled with dreams of the future, happy in the company of my good friend, Fortunato. We were walking together one spring evening in the Piazza Santa Anna. Come, Angelo. Here's the cafe. They say Beppo keeps rare old wines. I should like to sample some. <laughs> I know you fancy yourself a great connoisseur of vintages, Fortunato Mio, but I shall not join you now, for I am meeting Lucia. You and your Lucia. Let's have a glass or two. Keep her waiting. That's good for any girl. Lucia isn't any girl. She's the bright star of my life. I love her very dearly. Love? <laughs> you may love her, but what makes you think you can win her? What have you to offer as a son-in-law? A likely face and figure, granted. But, well, I'm my uncle's heir. All you Montresors are long-lived. Have you business sense, brains, <laughs> ambition? My ambition is to have Lucia for my wife, a small casa. <laughs> yeah, yes, and many sniveling bambinos. Yes. Ah, no. Now, my dear simpleton, you haven't a chance with her father. Now, suppose it were me. Lucia is beautiful, yes. I might even wish to marry her myself. And I could, yes. Merely by telling her father that I wish to. That would be a good business alliance. But love, ah, nonsense. How can you say such things, Fortunato? Why do you brag so? I'm not bragging. I shall always get what I want. I am a leader of men, whilst you, you are a love-lorn loon. Born to be a sheep and a follower. Well, I'm not following you now. Go, oh, sample your fine wine and talk of the great things you will do. I have something much more important to do. Angelo! Angelo! It's Lucia. Isn't she lovely? Mmm, very lovely. Caro mio. Lucia, darling. It's wonderful to see you. Greetings, my little pigeon. Good evening, Fortunato. But I am not your little pigeon. <laughs> Good night, Angelo. Arrivederci, Fortunato. Lucia. Lucia, dear, you were almost rude to Fortunato. Why? I do not like him. I know he is your friend, but... He is. He's a great fellow and very fond of me. Is he? Of course. Man's man, perhaps. Not a woman's ideal, He's but... cruel and hard. A girl can tell. 
But let's not talk of Fortunato. Are you going to speak to Father tonight? Yes. But I'm afraid he won't allow you to marry me. Why not, Angelo? I have no wealth, no business sense. Darling, do not belittle yourself so. You are all the world to me. Lucia, is this miracle true? You do really love me? With all my heart. Now and forever. Be brave, Angelo. Speak to my father. He will not deny me happiness. To my great joy, her father gave us his blessing. Lucia was to be my own dear wife. I was walking on air, humbly, deeply grateful. Just before our wedding was to take place, all our friends were invited to Lucia's home to celebrate. It was a happy evening of song, wine, and congratulations. Fortunato, most of all, seemed elated at my good fortune. And he and I were the last to take our leave. We walked along through the dark, empty streets, talking of the party and plans for my coming wedding. We reached his door. See here, boy, I do not like your going home alone. Huh? It's the blackest kind of night. I think I should go along with you. <laughs> you mean you walk me to my door and then I escort you to yours and so back and forth, back and forth till dawn. But huh? these streets <laughs> are not safe so late at night. Oh, nonsense. I have my lantern. Well, don't say I didn't warn you. No, I'm not afraid. Well, an answer, my friend. Till tomorrow, Angelo. Hmm. That's funny. Fortunato's worrying over me. It is pretty dark. What's that? <laughs> I keep imagining I hear things. Someone is following me. Who's there? That's him. Grab him. What do you want? Oh, you fool, Rufio. Don't let this lantern shine in your face like that. Smash it. Help! Help! I've got his hands. Get that sack over his head. Keep him quiet, Rufio. Uh -huh. But don't kill him. Uh -huh. They don't uh -huh. pay for corpses. Uh -huh. Just a gentle tap. <laughs> uh -huh. As limp as a rag in my arms. Now, take his feet and hurry. We must get away from here. I regained my senses and awoke to a misery of mental and physical anguish. I had no way of knowing where I was. The hot sun was beating down as I lay with other human wretches in the scuppers of a filthy ship. Running through my aching head was the name Rufio. And the picture of that scarred, cruel face glaring in the last glow of my lantern. I had been sold into slavery. I, Angelo Montresor, lashed and beaten on endless marches over burning sands. And on into the barren mountains. Where in our misery and pain, we were put to hard labor in the stone quarries. I'll not forget those endless years. The ache in my heart for my beloved Lucia. My longing for my native land. And above all, the haunting hate I bore for the man Rufio. I swore I'd find him. If not on this earth, then in an even worse hell than the one to which he had condemned me. And then one day, a miracle happened. I escaped. Starving and nearly dead from exhaustion, I reached a small seacoast village. There I begged crust. Yes, begged in the streets for Soldi to buy my passage on some vessel bound for Italy. See here, my son. Look up here. Allah, Allah. Arms. Arms for the love yeah, of... Let me look at you. Benedetto Cielo. My language. My native tongue. As I thought. Your skin is dark enough and you're filthy as any beggar. But those eyes of yours tell me that once you had another god than Allah. Come, man, speak. Are you not a countryman of mine? Si, signore. And I hope to return to my homeland as I... as I hope for heaven. You are not fleeing justice. I'm seeking justice for the foulest treachery. Well, let that wait. You can tell me your story later. My ship is about to weigh anchor. And if you'd like to come along... I'd like to. May the saints bless you. But I have no money to pay you with. Well, don't let that worry you. After a bit of food and rest, I'll... I'll let you work your passage home. <laughs> As a free man, I sailed for home, stepped ashore on the soil of my beloved country, and walked eagerly into the town where I was born. I longed to seek out Lucia, but I was ashamed of the sailor's clothes I wore, so I hurried to my old friend Fortunato's to borrow something suitable. 
Is Signor Fortunato at home? No, sir. Only the Signora is in. His wife? Si, Signor. Good old Fortunato married? Why, this is wonderful news. My compliments to your mistress and say that a very old friend of her husband begs an interview. Madonna is not well. Oh. But I shall ask if she will see you. Come in, Signor. Uh, thank you. I shall wait here. Signora! I have heard every word, Anna. Leave us. Quickly. Angelo. Angelo. Lucia. Angelo, my love. Who oh, is it really you? Let me touch you. Let me look at your dear face. Oh, my Lucia. Oh. How I've longed to hold you close in my arm. But now, now you and Fortunato. Angelo, it was my father's wish that I marry Fortunato. Oh. When they told me that you were dead, I died too. I became a thing with no heart, without any will. Oh, Lucia. Fortunato, it was your friend. I thought it would bring you nearer because we could talk of you. But he's never allowed me to mention your name. Oh, Angelo, he is so cruel. Fortunato, cruel to you? Oh, my darling. What shall we do? I love you so. And I have loved only you. And always shall. But, Angelo, there is something I must beg of you. Implore you to do. Lucia, beloved, what is it? When Fortunato comes, if he seems rude to me, say nothing. Do nothing. It would only make him more cruel. Oh, there he is. He must not know that I have told you. Act, Angelo. Act for my sake. We must seem carefree and gay. Carefree and gay. Fortunato, come in here. A, a miracle has happened. Why, hurry, see. Here is a long-lost friend. What are you babbling about? Who is this? <gasps> Dio Pacenti, Angelo. But, but you were killed. No, old friend, not killed. Oh, uh, well. Heaven be praised. We've mourned you all these years. What happened? Where have you been? Well, that night I left you at your house. I was followed and, and set upon by two ruffians. Santa Maria. And to think I let you go home alone. Oh, I blame myself. Have you any suspicion? Is suspicion? Who... Yes. Absolutely none. Through all the years of torture, I try to think, who did this to me? What hidden enemy? Or perhaps, Angelo, a false friend. Be still, Lucia. This is a man's talk. You will serve us best by getting a bottle of my favorite Lacrima Christi from the cellars. This should be a celebration. See, si, Fortunato. So I do not know one bottle from another. She has a fear of my wine cellars. Hates to go down there. <laughs> ah, what an escape you had, Angelo. From matrimony, I mean. Were you surprised to learn I had wed your Lucia? <laughs> Why, I, I... I thought you scoffed at love. So I do. Marriage of convenience, uniting of two fortunes. Lucia's a very lucky woman. I'm a rich man. Yeah, yes, uh, L Lucia is very lucky. Here she comes. We'll see if we're lucky. Well, sweet pigeon, what have you brought us to drink? Ah, sapristi, I thought so. You've as much knowledge of wine as a donkey. Vino Rosso. Oh, Fortunato. What is it? This wine all over Lucia's dress. And it may make her more cheerful, even if it is only on the outside. <gasps> Lucia, are you all right? Pay no attention to her clutching at her heart, Angelo. That's a gesture she's fond of. But she's not well. Lucia's always ailing, aren't you, my sweet? Shall I get another bottle? No, I'll fetch the wine myself. Uh, but wait. Perhaps I shouldn't leave you two childhood sweethearts alone together. In those rags, Angelo, you are no romantic hero. And as for Lucia... <laughs> Lucia. What is he doing to you? Oh, my darling, I can't believe it. Fortunato, one so good a companion, a gentle friend. My dearest, in those last happy hours so long ago, I warned you that Fortunato was cruel and hard not to be trusted. And I believed you wrong. Oh, my Lucia, come away with me. We'll seek a new life together. Oh, no, Angelo. I am Fortunato's wife. I cannot break my vows. But what of our love? Our love that has sustained us during all these years. That love will never die, my darling. But there can be no happiness for us on this earth. 
Our love can be a love fulfilled only after death. Oh, Angelo. Angelo. <laughs> Stories of false friends and intrigue are as old as time itself. Here, however, we have the story of a false friend, Fortunato, whose machinations bring unhappiness and near destruction to two people who seek and deserve a far better fate. The climax of tonight's Weird Circle story promises a disturbing conclusion. But speaking of good friends and happy conclusions, Smokers everywhere know that Ogden's fine-cut tobacco has been a steady friend to the discriminating roll-your-own smoker right down through the years. They know, too, that when they say, make mine Ogden's, there's only one possible conclusion, and that's complete smoking satisfaction. Try Ogden's. See how uniformly it rolls into a fine cigarette, and the moment you light up, the inner goodness of Ogden's is yours to enjoy to the full. You'll say that Ogden's is tops in quality. You'll agree that Ogden's is easy to roll, delightful to smoke. Yes, easy to roll, delightful to smoke. And now back to our story, The Cask of Amontillado by Edgar Allan Poe. Angelo, on the eve of his wedding to his beloved Lucia, is waylaid and sold into slavery. After long years, he escapes and returns at last to his own house. To his despair, he finds that Lucia, believing him dead, has obeyed her father's wish and has married Fortunato, a connoisseur of wines, and Angelo's best friend. And now, our story continues. I hardly know how I left Fortunato's house that day nor remember how I took up my lonely life. My uncle had died, and I was now the owner of the Montresor fortunes. Months passed. Fortunato and I met, of course. I was unable to understand his treatment of Lucia, but I didn't blame him for my tragedy. He had thought me dead. Seeking forgetfulness, I often wandered to the waterfront. The wretched hovels were usually silent and dark. But one night I saw a glimmer of light and heard angry voices. I was about to pass by when I heard a familiar voice. I, I paid you to kill him, Rufio, your dog, and in order to gain more money, you sold him into slavery. How dare you? Signor Fortunato, that meant death, a slow death. Well, he didn't die. Angelo Montresor is home and alive, and you must do your work again. Oh? Oh. So you have come to pay me more gold for a second killing? Yes. Signor Fortunato, I hate shedding blood, but I do love money. You are a rich man. Surely you don't wish Montresor to learn of your friendly efforts? Blackmail, eh? Persuasion. For my silence, a thousand lire. A thousand... Death! Take that! <laughs> For your silence... I couldn't move or cry out. I hardly breathe. I saw my old friend Fortunato sling from that wretched hovel, a liar, a murderer, a Judas. I had to think. I would have vengeance, that was certain. But I must run no risk of being found out. Above all, Lucia must not be involved. She must not learn of her husband's treachery. I began to lay my plans, but vowed that neither by word or deed would I cause Fortunato to doubt my goodwill. This resolve was soon put to the test. It was carnival time. I came to face with Fortunato. The man wore motley, and on his head a pointed jester's cap with bells. Gaily costumed girls followed him. La saluto, Angelo. Well met. My dear Fortunato, how remarkably well you look. Ah, uh, don't I? <laughs> a connoisseur of beauty as well as of wine. But come along, let's have a bottle of wine now. Uh, I'd love to, but I'm not in costume. Well, get yourself one. This is carnival. Meet me at the cafe. We'll make a night of it. Perhaps I will. All right, see you later. Then I'll wait for you. Don't fail me. <laughs> Signor, Signor Angelo, I thought I'd never find you in this crowd. Anna, 
What brings you? Madonna Lucia is dying. No. Oh, no. Father Luigi is with you. Hurry, Signor. She is calling for you. You have come in time, my son. She has not long to live. Where is she, Father? In here, my son. She awaits you. Dear Ciro, dear Ciro. Angelo, beloved. You have come. My own dearest love. Yes. Your own. Forever. I have always belonged to you. Never to... Fortunato. Oh, beware of him, Angelo mio. He taunted me cruelly today. Boasted that it was he who had paid to have you murdered. I know, I know, Lucia mia. Don't, don't try to talk. I know it all. Just lie here in my arms and remember our great love oh. there. But, Angelo, I beg you, do nothing against Fortunato. It would only bring harm to you. Beloved, nothing matters but you. Angelo, kiss me. Our last... Adieu, my love. Lucia. Lucia. Adieu. Lucia died in my arms, and my heart died with her. But my mind was keen. At last I was determined that the plan I had made would be carried out. Now, tonight, the carnival was at the height of its madness, and I knew where to find Fortunato. Providing myself with a mask and domino to avoid recognition, I pushed my way through the revelers. <laughs> Fortunato! <laughs> Fortunato! Who called? It is I, Angelo. Oh, I didn't know you in that gay disguise. What's the secret? <laughs> Where can I find Lucchese? Lucchese, why? Well, uh, some time ago, I ordered a cask of Amontillado. Ah, that nectar of the gods. And when I got home just now, I found that it had been delivered. You jest in the middle of the carnival? Yes, and I was silly enough to pay the full Amontillado price. I was afraid of losing a bargain. Lucchese cannot tell Imontillado from Chianti. I am the man to tell you whether you've a bargain or not. Ah, where is this precious cast? In the dungeons of my house. My secret cellar. With the secret cellars, then. Lead on. <coughs> you're, you're making me thirsty. Oh, no, my friend, no. I, I can't impose on you. Now, Lucchese... Nonsense, can... come. No, Fortunato, be sensible. You have a severe cold. And remember, my vaults are damp. My cold? Ah. <laughs> a monculado. That will cure my cough. Let me judge it for you. Come. <laughs> Taking two torches from the wall, I gave one to Fortunato and bowed him through suites of rooms to the archway leading to the vaults. Down long, winding stairs, we stood at length on the wet earth of the Montresor catacombs. Fortunato's step was a bit unsteady, for he had tasted much wine, and his bells jingled as he walked. The cask. Where is this cask? Oh, much further on, beyond these newer coffins. Oh, it's cold here. We'd best go back. Your health is precious, and you are a man of importance. I cannot be responsible for your illness. <laughs> Enough. I shall not die of a cough. True, true. I do not mean that you should. But stop a moment. Here in these bins is wine. A drink of this Chateau Lafitte will drive out the damp. Here you are. Break off the neck and warm yourself. <laughs> Fair Baco, a cheerful spot for a drink with all these coffins and bones. Eh? <laughs> I drink to the buried that repose around us. And I drink with you to your long life. These vaults of yours are enormous. Yes, we're below the riverbed now. Beyond these casks and coffins are the inmost recesses of the catacomb. I can wait no longer. <coughs> Where is the Simontilado? In there. Through that grill door, an iron door. <laughs> Looks like a dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> so it is. It's the dungeon where the old Montresors kept their precious captives and where now I keep my most 
precious vintages. I can hardly <laughs> see my torch burn so dimly. Oh, that's just because the air is foul in here. But look, there's the great cask. I'll hold your torch. There. Here's a flagon. Go in and sample it to your heart's content. At last, the Amontillado. I have not tasted it in years. Ah, Angelo, this is superb. It is priceless. Ah, but, but bring the torches. <laughs> oh, where, where are you? Here! Outside the door! Uh, oh, Angelo, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> a very good joke indeed. <laughs> An excellent jest. <guess. laughs> we, we will have a good laugh about it back at the cafe. <laughs> yeah. now, now, let me out. It's damp in here. It's very damp. Feel the nitre on the walls. Oh, yeah. Open that door. I wish to return uh, to the carnival. Uh, the carnival is ended for you. Besides, you promised to give me your opinion of Maya Mundilado. Kiss the wine. Let me out of here. The door is solid iron. You'll only hurt your hand. Angelo, open this door. I say open it this moment. And I say no. This is my moment. My time of revenge. Revenge? For the love of heaven, Montreso, don't leave me here. Yeah, mercy. Had you mercy when you stabbed Rufio? Montreso, the damp, the dark, have pity. Had you pity when you paid to have me murdered? Angelo, save me. Don't leave me here. Pity for Lucia's sake. Silence. Don't mention her sainted name. But I'll die, I'll die, 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 die like that. Yes, Fortunato, you'll die. And none but the rats will ever find you here. I leave you with the bones of my ancestors. Angelo, come back. Don't leave me. Angelo. <laughs> the hideous tinkle of those jester bells. Forty years I've lived with the sound of those bells. Fool's bells. Jester's Bells. From the time-worn pages of the past, we have brought you the immortal tale, A Cask of Amontillado. Bellkeeper, toll the bell. Tonight, friends, Ogden's has brought you another Weird Circle story for your listening enjoyment. Remember, for true smoking enjoyment, when you roll your own cigarettes, be sure to use Ogden's fine-cut tobacco. It's the acknowledged leader with smokers who know and insist upon quality smoking. A fine-cut tobacco that's ideal for rolling mild and satisfying cigarettes. Try Ogden's. You'll find Ogden's easy to roll, delightful to smoke. Yes, easy to roll, delightful to smoke. Next week at this same time, be sure to join us at the Ogden's Playhouse for a radio dramatization of A Rope of Hair by Guy de Maupassant. If you smoke a pipe, try Ogden's Cut Plug. It's a pipe tobacco you'll really enjoy.